And now, it's time for Southern California's Sports Fishing Voice. Let's talk hookup. For the next two hours, join Pete Gray, Rock Cod Rick Maxa, Corey Sandin, and this week's special expert guest for fishing information, new techniques to catch more fish, and the most current scoop on what's happening in the water. Let's Talk Hookup is sponsored in part by Yamaha Outboards. Reliability starts here. By Ford, the official truck of Let's Talk Hookup. And Shimano Rods and Reels. Fish with the best. Shimano. Get ready for the fastest two hours on radio with the hosts of Let's Talk Hookup, Pete Gray, Rock God Rick Mexa, and Corey Sandin. Good morning, Anglers, and welcome to Let's Talk Hook Up Ain't Peak Ray with Corey Sandin. We're in the studio with Mr. Captain Jim Hughes of the Cortez. It's going to be a great show, talking fishing on that incredibly popular and great legendary boat, the Cortez, and they're biting. We're going to tell you all about it. You stay tuned. This is Southern California's Sport Fishing Voice. It's Let's Talk Hook Up on the Let's Talk Hook Up app and network. When it comes to catching big bluefin tuna in local waters, Shimano has the gear proven to land the big ones. You already know the hot jig is the Shimano Butterfly Flatfall Jig. And when you match that with the right tackle system, it makes this great jig even more effective. We suggest you grab a Tranks 500 HG and fill it with 80-pound Power Pro Max Quattro. Max Quattro is 25% thinner, which means 25% more line capacity when you hook that giant. Match your new setup with a Therese 70H and you have the power. Power to put the wood to that big blue fin tuna. The Tranks 500 HG has the cranking power you need. And with the level wind, you concentrate on fishing your Shimano flat ball and leave the line control to the Tranks reel. Hundreds of big fish have been caught on the flat ball. And when you add the Power Pro Max Quattro Tranks Terez combo, you'll take your fishing to the next level. See your local dealer or check Shimano.com for all the details. You've heard all about it. You know the angler's catching fish habit, so what's holding you back? It's a fact. Fishdope.com really does help you catch more fish and burn less fuel. Fishdope.com is the only fish-finding service with a spotter plane along with a crew of top anglers on the water almost every day that report actual locations and catches. You can get daily catch reports from Point Conception to San Martin Island 365 days a year. Fishdope.com is for everyone, whether you have your own boat, fish on your friend's boat, or a sport boat. Fishdope.com has online planning tools, moon phase, tides, hot bite icons, and more. So bottom line is, if you don't have Fishdope.com, well, you're probably missing a lot of bites. Membership costs less than $50 of gas, and that's for the entire year. That's right, one year. What a bargain. Plus, use the special code to save $20 on a new Fishdope.com membership. Check it out today. Fishdope.com. Catch more fish, burn less fuel. Cast Tours is a family-owned and operated travel company that specializes in taking you to great fishing destinations. They take pride in providing the best and most affordable vacation packages available. For over 20 years, Cast Tours has been creating unique sport fishing and vacation trips. Whether it's a fishing trip, a family vacation, or an adventure, they will provide you the service and value you deserve. Call Cast Tours at 800-593-6510 or check casttours.com. We all need to get around, but we all need something different from our vehicles. Your San Diego County Ford dealers have you covered if you're looking for a new truck this month. Plus, it's SUV season, so they have great deals for everyone. Whether it's a new Echo Sport that is nimble and fun around town, or the Ford Explorer that is capable of putting a boat in the water and has seating for seven, Ford has you covered. Ford trucks and SUVs aren't just powerful and legendary. They have the latest technology that helps you seamlessly connect your smartphone and ensure you're safe on the road. Features like Pro Trailer Backup Assist on trucks are truly a game changer at the ramp, helping you back up a trailer by simply turning a knob on the dash and doing the hard work for you. So check out all the great deals during SUV season and save some money on the right gear for you. Learn more at buyfordnow.com or visit your San Diego County Ford dealers today. They'll be glad to hook you up. Good morning and welcome back to Let's Talk Hookup. Yeah, pre-Christmas, huh? 
Pre-Christmas. How about uh, that? Last show before Christmas. Hanukkah today. Happy yeah. Hanukkah. Oh, happy Hanukkah. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Kwanzaa's coming up. Kwanzaa? Yeah, yeah there's all <laughs> kinds of holidays this time of the year, right? <laughs> right. Uh, how about a, how, to, how about Fishmas? I, I like it. Yeah. How about a little bit of bluefin bite? Yeah. Like how it. about that, Captain Jim Hughes? Still going on. How, yeah. Good morning. They were biting yesterday, huh? A little bit, yeah. Yeah. They haven't left. There's no reason for them to leave. They're, they're here. Yeah, they're here. It's just a weather thing, right? It was. The weather was beautiful yeah. yesterday. Yep. Is the moon affected? I mean, dark of the moon right now, no moon. It doesn't, no. Yeah. The, moon, the moon affects, you know, the beach stuff, you know, yeah. high tide, low tide kind of stuff, you know. Lobster fishing right now. And, yeah. Uh, you know, tide fishing. Yeah. You know, I haven't seen that much change as not, far as not uh, much. offshore. Yeah. No. Yeah. But, uh, oh, good. Yeah. yeah. What what a season, though, huh? Yeah, pretty Pretty good. Okay, rank it compared to, to last year. Ninety, or excuse me, two thousand nineteen versus two thousand eighteen. What do you think? Same. Same. Consistent. Yeah, just consistent, consistent fishing. Yeah. You know? uh, yeah, that bluefin. It we had. See, I think we caught fish there in February, so we had eleven months this year so far. Wow. Of, of we caught bluefin in. Bluefin. Yeah. So straight. Yeah. Like I said, there's no reason for them to yeah. leave. the bait and the water setup's all perfect. They're not going anywhere. They're not going anywhere. Okay. I like it. Yeah. Bigger this year? Uh, I would say about the same. I yeah. think we lost some bigger fish this year, and I yeah. think uh, everybody was involved with a little bit of, you know, heartbreaks. But there was yeah. uh, the bigger fish and stuff wasn't like it has been the last three or four years up and down backside of Clemente. It was all over the place. But yeah. You know, there was stuff all the way from the upper end of the 60 all the way up to way past Clemente, up by, you know, San Nick and, and uh, Santa Barbara yeah. Islands. So. Just spread a bait. Yeah, there's yeah. bait. there was bait everywhere. Everywhere. I mean, you wake up in the morning and there'd be 20 fathoms of bait underneath you. Really? No matter where you stopped. Yeah. And fish, too? And fish. Yeah. <laughs> so. so tell us, like, do you have a trip, 2019 trip that stands out, like time of the year, one that just, like, absolutely, man, did we get them on that trip. We did, uh... We had one of our newer charters, uh, Brian Winstar. We had a uh, two and a half day trip that they wanted to go strictly bluefin fishing. Um, we got down there, the lower into Clemente, and got down below uh, Desperation Edge, and we got on a school early in the morning, and uh, had a lot of that fifty to hundred pound fish. Yeah, uh, really good stop. And they decided, okay, let's go up the backside so we can find some bigger ones. And the wind was blowing a little bit offshore, and we got on a spot of them big ones. And we drifted from the 100-fathom curve to the 300-fathom curve, and we kept three to five going to the, I call them uh, 180s to 340s. God, that is crazy. We had, I think we had three or four over three, oh and then gosh. another four or five over two. Wow. What, what, what time good. of the year was that? What what month do you remember? I believe I'm not positive, but I think it was in August. August. You know, uh, I have to go back and look, but that was our really good. That was stand one of the standout. And then uh, we, it was they were they were biting, they were they, licking it. Yeah. You know, we kept five of our big gear in the water the whole time. As soon as we get a big one on the boat and put another one in the water. I mean, that's that's wow. like stuff you you're doing on the RP. Yeah. You know? No, it was it was yeah. it was. It was good as it gets. Yeah, better than better than Clarion Hurricane Bank. Yeah. Uh, a day, it was you have fast. a day like that. Yeah, right. Yeah, no, that fact that's a lot of guys on the boat said, "Man, this is just like long range fishing." Yeah, <laughs> it was. It has been for the last it has couple been, of years. Yeah. It's it's been a, a, a long range experience if you want to catch big fish, right? Yeah, well, you know, yeah. a lot of the guys fish Guadalupe on a, on a you know fishing for that yellowfin and stuff. Right. And that bluefin here was the same size. Yeah. You know, on shorter trips. Well, and what's funny is people are getting spoiled. It's like, wow, well, you know, those fish were only 50 to 100. You oh, know, we heard that right? a lot. <laughs> you know, we heard that like, a lot. Like, huh, what? Yeah, there's nothing wrong with them. Yeah, there's nothing Beautiful wrong with fish. that. Yeah. yeah, beautiful. So, it was good so fishing, you, and, you know, there's the yellowfin in the mix. Uh, there, there was no problem staying busy. Yeah. You know, depending on what the guys wanted to catch. Yeah. But it, interestingly enough, there was there a mix of, like, not a lot of Dorado around, yellow. Very few Dorado this year. Yeah. You know? and, and we saw some early, and 
But I think a lot of it, too, is most of this fish concentration was all the way from basically that 425, 371, 302, all the way up to the island. Yeah. And there wasn't a lot of guys that went down below. South. All right. And the kelps were few and far between. Yeah. You know, as far as kelps would. You'd see plenty of kelp, but one out of 30 would have some fish on it. So how would you locate the fish? I mean, where... Were they all sonar schools? Yeah, most of them sonar schools, uh, you know, bird schools, uh, current breaks, you know, temperature breaks. Uh-huh. But uh, I'd say most of it was sonar schools. When you say temperature break, how are you recognizing a temperature break? Oh, you'd go over a break and you'd, you'd actually see a rip in the water and you'd watch it drop a degree. Or, wow. You know, and you just follow that thing. It's going to be on one side or the other. Yeah. You know, but we had that and then uh, sonar schools. Some of them were just what we call full screeners. Everybody in the fleet calls them full. Some guys are shooting 600 feet. Some guys are shooting five. Some guys are shooting four. But it'd fill up the whole screen. That's wow. crazy. There were some gigantic schools. Wow. And and some, and some was it mostly those gigantic schools were smaller fish or mixed up? Oh, no, no. It was, it was mixed fish. Mixed. I mean, it was a little bit different this year was, you know, you could go down for yellowfin, you know, or you can go for bluefin. Well, this year... You get a stop on yellowfin, the bluefin will push them out of the way, or vice versa. Interesting. You get a stop on bluefin, and the yellowfin will push it out of the way. Yeah. You know, or get a mix. Interesting. You know, at that lower end of the butterfly late in the year, that's what it was, a mix of that good grade yellowfin. Yellowfin. It was 30, 40 pounders. Yeah. And then same thing with the bluefin, 50, 60, 70 pounders. And, and when you get that yellowfin mixed in, they get a little frisky well, they, and, yeah. and kind of turn on the, well, usually, the bluefin. Better. Yeah. What Usually what happens is the yellowfin think they're bluefin, and they... They get a little shy, but it wasn't that way this year. Uh-huh. The other way around. Yeah, we kind of like it that way. Yeah, a little competition for the for the bait. Yeah, right. And it, and you on the Cortez out of Seaforth, you were running steady through November, right? Yeah, the, you know that's what I've noticed. You know, you used to get started with you know in July and stuff like that. You can see the the charter schedule starting to move more into November. Yeah. Like the first three weeks of November were already you know booked up here for the really. Year. Yeah. It's not a bad thing. Wait no. a minute. Wait a minute. You're booked up for the first next few, year, yes. the first few weeks in November yes. of 2020. You know, so you can see the switch over, but you look at July, and July doesn't look so red hot. Oh, really? So we need that little push of albacore next year. Yeah. Right. Right. Get that started. But, hey, there was plenty of bluefin in July, too, there right? There was plenty of bluefin all the way from April. Those guys were down there outside calling it from April all the way on. Yeah. So There's stuff around. Yeah. So tell us about the Cortez. Those are our list- listeners that may not be familiar with the boat. It's sixty foot seaway. Uh, we've done a lot of modifications, obviously, on okay. it, and uh, we carry up to twenty three. But most of my groups have been fifteen, sixteen passengers. Yeah, you know? uh, nice. I've had load. pretty much a steady clientele. You know, we don't do a whole lot of advertising. Mostly word of mouth and stuff. Yeah, but we got three new groups. I think that we had this year, uh, but most of it's been groups have been with me for twenty years. Wow. Out of one of the coolest landings I yeah. yeah. mentioned, C4 we Sport got, Fishing. Yep. Yeah, right there. Got a there. good office staff up there, and everybody's, you know, a lot of good boats running yeah. out of there. So. Run by fishermen for fishermen. That's what it is. That's what you it know, is, yeah. John leading the crew there. You know, yeah. So. And a parking situation. Plenty of that. Right? Yeah, exactly. Plenty of that. Got to love that. Yeah. And free. I mean, yeah. come on. That's a yeah. commodity, really. Yep. So then, how does one get a charter on the Cortez? Uh, they call either C4 or they can call myself. Yeah. And, uh, you know, if we can get you in there, we will. And so um, you said uh, nice charter groups like 15 people. Yeah, a good group is 15, 17. Wow. Works out perfectly. That's you know, Our last group was 10, you know. Nice. Uh, and we did a three-and-a-half-day trip. So that's a, there. I mean, that, for a group of 10, I mean, that's yeah. a lot of room. Sure. You know, it is. You know, on the bait tanks we put on there last year, we made it, you know, more of a triangle shape, so there's a lot of deck space. Nice. Know, and we can hold a lot more bait than we did with the four well. That's yeah. beautiful. So, um, day and a half to three and a half day, that's yes. kind of your niche? That's it. Yeah. yeah. What Mostly you, two and a half days, I'd say. That's your, yeah. your main deal is two right. and a half day trip. So a two and a half day trip gives a scenario. Leave at night, we, morning. Oh, we leave uh, at night. We, we will, in the evening. Mm-hmm. I try to get out of there at six o'clock in the okay. evening. You know that way, we don't beat the overnight open party crowd and stuff. The bait receiver go sure. get our bait and uh, get out there. If the fish are way down there, we can get down there, be there at eight thirty in the morning. Mm-hmm. Or if they're close, we're you know not have to run real hard and get a feel of what's going time. on. Yeah, you know. And then you get. Two full days of fishing. Yes. And, and then you're Two, back. Back in the, the morning, morning. load. 
let the crew go get their laundry done, get our groceries loaded. And yeah. So yeah. are you on a two and a half day trip? Are you three nights on the boat? Uh, yeah. 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 That's that's a nice it nice trip. Works out. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And everybody likes it. We get in early in the morning if they get in on a weekday trip. That way they can get home. You know, a lot of our groups are from. North County or Los Angeles or, you know, somewhere north of San Diego. Sure. So they beat the traffic. Beat the traffic, yeah. yeah. Get in early and get it going. Wow. Well, as you can hear, we have a great show lined up for today. And you talk about Christmas Spectacular. Wait till you hear what Jim brought in today. I know it, Holy Jim. Mackerel. Santa Claus Jim. Yeah. I know it. We're giving away. I mean, check this out. If if just, if this was for one, it would be a big deal. Jim. One day, a day and a half to two and a half day trip on the Cortez from Jim. But look at this. The winner can bring a buddy. So yeah. this certificate. I hate guys to have to come out by themselves. Right, exactly. Yeah. It's a trip for two. It's a trip for two. This and, is and, incredible. And when it says a day and a half to three and a half, it's 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 what? Or, or to two and a half. Yeah. Two and a half. Two, a yeah. day and a half to two and a half day. Mm-hmm. It's it's what's available on on the books. And yeah, if we get you know, if we have, yeah, open party trip, or if I have a charter that needs a couple guys. You know, we'll we'll fit them in there. I, I like to fit the groups in with the right people. Yeah. So, so the winner, you'll you'll get a hold of them. It'll yeah. be kind of a tailored kind of a deal. Yeah. You sure. know? Super like, cool. Let us know when you're gym. available, depending on availability. We'll yeah. You. A lot of my charter masters say I need a couple guys. You know, can you find a couple? Which is not an issue. Yeah. Super, super cool of you, Jim. Santa Claus, Jim. We're going to call yeah. you today. Yeah. For so sure. So give us a shout at eight three three two eight eight zero nine seven three. That's our number here. We're going to be right back on Let's Talk Hookup. More from Jim Hughes on the Cortez when we return on the Let's Talk Hookup app and network. When bad weather and rough seas send other boats back to the dock, SeaKeeper allows you to fish longer and fish harder, even in the roughest conditions. Here's great news. If your boat is between 27 and 32 feet, SeaKeeper has you stabilized. The SeaKeeper 2 is optimized to eliminate up to 95% of boat roll on boats up to 35 feet. Even better, this SeaKeeper 2 is so small it can fit inside a customized leaning post and operate off battery power, making installation fast and easy. Check out the SeaKeeper demo boat at upcoming shows and arrange a free test ride on the boat with the SeaKeeper team. SeaKeeper has changed the lives of many Southern California anglers, including Pete Gray, and will allow you to stay on the fishing grounds when others need to head back to port. To learn more about how SeaKeeper can change your life on the water and book your free demo ride, visit SeaKeeper.com slash take a ride. Think about it. Eliminate up to 95% of boat roll on your boat. Once you feel it, you'll never boat without it. Sea Keeper. This is Greg Stotesbury from AFCO. For more than 58 years, the American Fishing Tackle Company has been recognized as the premier manufacturer of precision-built offshore fishing tackle. AFCO continues this tradition today with an innovative technical fishing clothing line designed and built by fishermen for fishermen. From our next-generation waterproof shorts like Tactical or Stealth to our new anhydrous waterproof jacket and bibs, the entire AFCO clothing line is purpose-built with the latest AFTEC fabrics and features designed to deliver for the demanding angler. To find AFCO products, go to AFCO.com and find a dealer near you. Two years ago, Gamakatsu set out to develop a hook light enough for live bait to swim naturally, yet strong enough to handle your next trophy bluefin. The answer? The Gamakatsu Nautilus Heavy Duty. Most captains agree the Gamakatsu Nautilus hook is best for tuna. And now with the introduction of the Nautilus HD, no matter how big the tuna, Gamakatsu has a hook to handle it. The new Nautilus HD is now available with solid ring or standard hook. Get it now at select tackle shops and start getting bid. Here's John Ireland for Rancho Leonero. You know, the ranch is unique. It's one of the few places in the world where you can still drive ATVs up the beach. We have fishing from the beach. We have dive trips that we run to Pomo in a number of different spots. Kayaking, of course, has been real big. We were one of the first hotels to introduce kayaking. The ranch is small, you know, it's intimate, it's 34 rooms, so everyone gets to know everyone. The old saying, where everyone knows your name, well, truly at Ranch Lanero, the employees do know pretty darn near all our guest names. And what's even more interesting is most of the guests know each other's names. Very personal, very intimate, and a special, special environment. Two miles of beachfront, a mile on either side of the hotel. Ranch Lanero is really the last of the old-style Baja fishing resorts. 1-800-646-225. Five two, 1-800-646-BAHA. And RanchoLeonero.com. I'll personally guarantee your best fishing experience and vacation at Rancho Leonero. 
Happy holidays from Fisherman's Landing Tackle. Hi, this is Doug Kern. Nothing could be better for that saltwater angler on your list than a gift from Fisherman's Landing Tackle and Shimano. We have the best Shimano has to offer, including Talica, Trinidad, Tranks, Terramar, Cold Sniper, Torium, Flatfall, and the all-new Speedmaster Lever Drag 2-Speed Reel. We have the most complete selection of Shimano saltwater tackle and the knowledge to help you pick out that perfect gift. Check out saltwatertackle.com or come by and see us at Fisherman's Landing Tackle at Fisherman's Landing in San Diego. All right, welcome back to Let's Talk Hook Up in studio with Mr. Jim Hughes. Yeah, Captain Jim Hughes of Cortez, a really fantastic guest and uh, talking fishing here. 833-288-0973. 833-288-0973 is the line. We have a line open. You have a chance to win a day and a half to two and a half day trip on the Cortez for two. Two people, which very generous Christmas gift from Jim there. Appreciate that, Jim. We like the people come out with somebody they know. Yeah, that's know. nice. Yeah. And and make new friends. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, for sure. Check out this week's edition of Western Outdoor News. Corey, does that make you want to go striped bass fishing? I see that. It's a yeah. beautiful fish. Huh? Yeah. That'll eat in MC swim bait. Oh, man, they're good eating, too. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah for sure. Uh, and, uh, of course, yellowtail and... Bonita, swordfish, all kinds of good stuff. This week's edition of Western Outdoor News, looking for a glass minute Christmas gift? Check it out. Western Outdoor News, a subscription to that would be a nice Christmas it gift. It would there, be. Last minute, for sure. Let's go ahead and jump into those phones. They're packed up. They want to talk to Jim. They are, and they are getting packed up. Let's open a line and talk to John. John from Los Alamitos. Welcome to Let's Talk Hookup, John. Good morning, guys. Hey, John. Good morning, John. It's a little crazy, uh, almost Christmas this week, and uh, there's still fish to be caught. That is awesome. Pretty cool, huh? Yeah. Hopefully we'll get a live report from the water, one of the guys out there fishing. Not a lot of guys out. A lot of guys no. doing maintenance right now, yes. right? Yes. Yeah, but they're, the tomahawk's out, I know, day and a half on the yep. tomahawk. Yeah. So maybe so we'll get a report from is to, My question is to Jim. Uh, I used to hear a lot when I was a little bit younger uh when it was a rainy season, uh, that albacore came back. Is that true, Jim? Did you dream you. that last night? <laughs> <laughs> no, because we've had some rainy seasons here in the last 10, 12 years. I mean, some more rain than we wanted, you know, at points. But uh, no, I don't see it at that. There's a there's a line that we follow across the Pacific, and it dipped a little bit lower below conception this year, but it's still been up. So and that line keeps coming a little bit. And that line, so. what 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 is a line? Well, it's just an indicator. Yeah. You know, but it's but is not it a current break or temperature line or what? What's it's a clean water temperature break type deal? Yeah. Uh, and we're just keeping an eye on it. And and you know. so those albacore, I mean, they come from Japan way and come it's across the Pacific. <laughs> and so when they hit the Eastern Pacific coast of California, yes. they kind of veer up or veer down and. They, that's yeah. They could come in as far uh, below uh, uh, Guadalupe and come up that direction, or they come straight in from the west. Um, but it seems like this year it seemed like those guys that were seeing and catching fish up there, Northern California, Washington. It's it was been early. Different. It was early oh, okay. this year. They saw fish early and caught fish early. Um, How was their season? It was a, it was all right. It was so yeah. so. You know, there was a lot not of guys. Great. Yeah, it, it, it's not as good as it's been in the past. But there's a lot of guys that had 100 ton, you know, years up there. But you know, I think there was a little bit of boats. a. Uh, sorry, Jim. I thought there was a, a little bit of a change the last couple seasons for them, where it had been pretty steady for like yes. a six year period, yes. right? Like good yeah. good sized fish, like yeah. in the 20, you know, to yeah. 25 pound range, but. Last season and the season prior, there were a lot of smaller a lot of smaller fish in yeah. the later season. In the same area where they'd been fishing yeah, off the Columbia. Exactly. Yeah. So exactly. the question is, are we ever going to see them here? In oh, yeah, we'll California? see them again. There, it'll come. Oh, yeah. We'll get, yeah. We'll get some. You know, there's, there's a couple factors here. Is years ago, we used to have the jig fleet here, and they, they covered a lot of water for us, yeah. you know, from the Central Pacific all the way up. So we had a good idea when that fish was going to be here or which way it was moving and so forth. We don't have that anymore. Yeah. You know, a lot of these guys are staying down, and then they jet straight up there because it's just steady. Right, exactly. And then um, the other indication also is it seems like they're catching fish a little bit earlier north. Oh. Uh-huh. Okay. Now, are we not getting out there early enough? 
you know. Oh, okay. Things have changed. Things yeah. are changing. Yeah. You know, cycles change. Absolutely. And and we don't have guys out there in April, May. You know, this bluefin thing's been tight to the beach for the most part. Yeah. You know, are we not getting guys out there early enough? Yeah. You know, I don't think anybody had to get out very far past that 118 line this year. You know, and that yeah. was pretty commonplace when we were fishing Albuquerque, eighty yeah. mile runs. Oh, yeah. I mean, I mean, it was. I, I, hey, I have nothing against going twenty, thirty miles and catching right. bluefin instead of Albuquerque. Well, right? exactly, and you can't blame yeah. them, you know. Yeah, and yeah. then there's usually a little bit of texture to the water involved with that too. Absolutely, you know? yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You mean <laughs> like, like how the core weather? Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know? and, and here we are. I mean, it's so funny. Here we are. We've had five or six seasons of just the most insane historical bluefin fishing, right? Absolutely. With some of the best quality of of fatty, just the best toro meat you could ever imagine. Here we are wishing for albacore. (laughs) Yeah, I I, I don't know about you. I'm not. I I, I, I I wish for another season just like we had. Yeah, it's it's keeping the boats full, you know. It's keeping the boats busy. Um, And there's always a chance to catch a lifetime fish every day you go out there. That's yeah. insane. You know, once in a lifetime fish. Yeah. And that's what's kept everybody roaring. Yeah. Know? Just keep up what we have, and then and then we can worry about it. Yeah, it's right? just like this this uh, deep drop swordfish thing going on. Yeah. Know? I haven't kept a, a real good record of how many have been caught, but there's well over 100 been caught. A lot. On private boats. He's amazing. And, you know, the commercial guys have had this experimental gear going right. the last couple of years. And they've been absolutely putting the wood to They're these getting things. them. They've been putting the wood to them. Yeah. And now the, this deep drop stuff is, you know, developing, 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 and guys, you know, are doing well. Yeah. You know. So here's an interesting question. Here they developed the deep drop swordfish yeah. technology to eliminate the long lines and gill nets. Correct. Is it, is it, are they catch? they seem to be catching more fish on the deep, the commercial guys on the deep drop than they did in the nets and the long lines? Is that possible? Yeah, they, yeah well, it's possible. Yeah. You know, they're, they're covering a lot more area. Yeah. You know, as far as straight up and down. And you can see the eye on the swordfish. They're big. They're yeah. deep water fish. Yeah. You know. It's a clean fishery, too. It's a clean fishery. And then you go back to, is there was, there was gill nets, but then there was guys that were doing our harpoon stuff. Yeah. Well, you know. Your chances of catching them on a hook with a deep line and all that other stuff is a little bit more. And you got to be, you know, there's guys that still do the harpoon stuff. They do well. Yeah. You know, they get to but, three or four. But the, five. the quality from the deep drop is oh. rivals the, yeah. the harpoon. Oh, oh absolutely. So I think the best part of the whole thing, we talked yesterday about being conservationists ourselves. Right. You know, I mean, we love the ocean. We love yeah. our environment, right? Is the the z- nearly zero bycatch with the deep drop yes. versus the gill net? Mm-hmm. Yes, yeah. it's a huge, huge, huge yeah. improvement. I mean, huge. yeah, absolutely, yeah, and it's good. I'm I'm glad that these guys, you know, they were it was a it was a difficult transition for them, but they all of a sudden they say, hey, we're making more money doing the deep drop thing than we were doing the other stuff. Yes, and better quality, and better quality. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely, so that's a good you thing. Know. Yeah. Hey, John, thanks a lot for the call this morning. Appreciate that. That does three up. 833-288-0973. And let's uh, talk to Roy. Roy, thanks for joining us this morning on Let's Talk Hookup. Good morning, Roy. Hey, good morning, guys. How are you doing today? Great. Good morning, Roy. Great. Hey, uh, questions. Uh, over this year, I guess, uh, I haven't heard a lot about the slide fishing and how it was doing and stuff. I used it for a lot of live bait and maybe the the flat balls and coat snipers and stuff. How... Have you guys had any success, or have you seen or heard about that? Like, uh, the, the, well, as far as trolling, like, there's not, a, you know, you, trolling on the back of the Cortez and, and then catching fish on the slide. Oh, you know, we had plenty of that. I mean, we had guys hooking fish on the slide. Some of these, you know, big foamers of bluefin and yellowfin, I mean, we're starting to circle and start throwing bait, and guys are putting their lines in the water. Really? Before the boat even slides stop, you have four or five hooked up. Getting them. No, no, fly line still, no. We, fly line has been... Good to start, and we've had. I'd say most of the fish are caught on fly line. Yeah, you know, and and, and get them on the slide before the boats even yeah. in a full stop. Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So yeah. so bluefin, yellowfin, both. To both. Fly line. Yeah. Now what about okay? You you obviously are seeing how big those fish are on the meter a oh, yeah. lot of times, right? Oh yeah, you can and, tell if they're good ones. Are you telling your passengers like, hey guys, this is a big school. Don't put the thirty pound. You in. try to. Yeah. You know, <laughs> you try to. You try. Hey, wait a minute. You know, guys, be careful. So we try to get them all set up with three sets of gear and tell them, hey, you know, 
good time to start letting your bait out right now while I'm still sliding ahead because, you know, guys use an 80 and 100 pound, they can't get a bait away from the boat. So yeah. they get it dropped in the water while the boat's still sliding ahead, you can get the bait away from the boat. But then you have a chance at a 200 pounder with yes, that. Yes, absolutely. It's like if you put 40 pound in, you got no chance. Yeah. Or Fair. very little chance. Good night. Fair. Yeah, <laughs> good night. No, no you, you, you try to give them a warning. You can't always guess because you'll be catching 40, 50, 60 pounder and you'll see them. And then all of a sudden, you'll see a big one come right through the the whole mess and just go, uh-oh. Yeah. You know, so. Hey, fishing the slide with a 100-pound. Now, and you're <coughs> talking my style. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Yeah. So do, generally speaking, do the fish congregate in same size schools, like 40 generally, to 60 yes. pounders? Yes. Okay. Generally, yes. Okay. You'll see the big fish. You'll be big fish, and it'll be big fish. Mm-hmm. And you'll see the 60, 70-pounders, 30-pounders, 20-pounders. They're all pretty much separated by gut. But when it starts getting a big area, and there's a lot of boats around and stuff like that, that you'll you right in the middle of everything you'll get a 200 pounder. Wow, you know? it can happen. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and there's no way you can prepare no, for that. No, no, yeah, you can't. All right. Hey, thanks a lot for the call, Roy. Appreciate that. That does free up eight three three two eight eight zero nine seven three. That's uh, already full. Yeah, they are <laughs> exactly. Let's talk to Bob. Bob from Cerritos. Welcome to the show this morning, Bob. Good morning, Bob. Good morning, guys. Uh, Merry Christmas to you all. Same Merry Christmas, guys. Bob. I just want to give a shout-out to uh, Rambo there. I fished with him quite a few years on the RP with Taka's uh, charter, and I just wanted to thank him personally for him helping me get my largest yellowfin. It was like uh, 286, and he was on the Ooh. tank about eight years ago now, I guess, when... He verified a whitefish that my son had caught. Absolutely. And uh, that ended up being a world record <laughs> whitefish that we uh, submitted. How, but, was, yeah, how big was the weight? Yeah. I don't it know was uh, 17.1 pounds. Yeah. Holy shit. An smokes. ocean whitefish? An ocean whitefish. Yeah. That's a, yeah. yeah. That's Daryl, a, Daryl gaffed it and it was on the starboard side rail. I was up on the bait tank. He goes, look at the size of this one. <laughs> and he pulled that thing over the rail as big as any yellow tail you see. Seventeen wow. pounds. That's I mean, that's, white fish. that's yeah. got to be close to three feet long. Yep, yeah, it was. That's crazy. Yeah. Craig, Craig did a good job. He wound that thing up, and he went, oh. and we all, everybody on the boat, just stopped and looked at it. That was giant. Yeah, that's crazy. Down on the ridge? Uh, no, we're down at uh, yeah, the ledge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow, whitefish aren't all the way down south, right? Yeah. Oh, they are. Oh, yeah. Wow. You get them down, you get them, a lot of guys mix them up with a tile fish. You know, uh-huh. The tile fish is a little bit more blue and stuff like that. And yeah. They're not the same fish, but yeah. the, the white fish. Living, yeah. Living all that water there. Good memories, huh, Bob? But, oh, yeah. And I was just wondering, you know, I, I know, Jim, you're probably busy as heck, you know, with all the bluefin around, but are you ever going to get back on the RP? I really, uh, we all um, miss you. Miss fish I'm going to be on there this trip. I'll be on oh, there really? January 1st, yep. All right, all right. We'll I'll be, be there. Forward to seeing you. I miss you guys. Are you on that Taka trip, yeah. Bob? Yes, uh, I've been fishing it for about the last twenty years or so. <laughs> wow, yeah, pretty cool. So, but, Jim, it, it, all right, yeah. Bob. Well, hey, have a merry Christmas and enjoy your trip uh, with Jim. Uh, you're gonna get him. Yeah, he's so much fun. He's a very, very uh, experienced man. The, very, he, very. Thank you, Bob. Yeah, you're you're saying that very lightly because Jim. <laughs> It has, has been around for many decades, and, and Bob, if you can see on this end, his smile is from ear to ear, seriously. Like, he's still so fired up about getting out on the ocean. It's pretty cool. Ready to go. Yes. Indeed. Hey, thanks a lot for the call this morning. Merry Christmas to you. How long have you been doing this, Rambo? A couple of years. A couple of years? <laughs> like, seriously, I mean, how, how long have you had the Cortez? Uh, Twenty... Two years, twenty-two, 22 years, twenty-two years with the Cortez. Years. But how many years then total? I got my first check in nineteen sixty-eight. There you C4. go, nineteen sixty-eight. Yeah. At Seaforth. Wow. At Seaforth. So you've been a Seaforth the whole yeah when your whole moved, career when I was from the marina. Yes. Real, I ran nails down where you're building the new dock at the really where it's at now. No kidding. As a kid. Yeah. Wow. And you took part in constructing the old A-frame. Building. Uh, not in the A-frame building, not but the A-frame. docks. Okay, okay, I got you. Know. When did you get your first license, captain's license? Uh, I passed the test before I turned 19. Wow. So, 
And then Dad got turned 19. And I was pounding on the door. Wow. And, it, and it's so cool. Be, I mean, I've known you for 25 plus years, yeah. and and to see your passion and your love for the ocean and taking people out still to this day. It's, oh yeah. It, so, it, yeah. What did you do yesterday? I took the whale boat out. Yeah, <laughs> you, you, you ran the whale boat out yeah. of Seaforth. Yeah. So yeah. cool. Uh, so what's the whale report? Uh, there was a little gap yesterday. Yeah. Um, There's there they are coming though. Oh yeah. 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 No, I heard the guys up there in Dana Point. They were seeing, seeing so, them. So forth. Yeah. Um, there was a little gap. I know uh, there was the day before there was one whale that was down there, juvenile that was down there by Point Loma. But there's still a lot of common dolphins. We had a big spot of Rizzo's the day before yesterday. Which is cool. There, one albino one right albino in the middle. Albino yeah. Rizzo. That Pretty rare. Cool. Yeah, very rare. Yeah. yeah. So. Rizzo's are cool. Yeah. They're like torpedoes going they're, through the water. Well, and they were, But they were moving real, real slow, and they stayed right with the boat and everything. Nice. We got good people view. had a good time, yeah. Yeah. Lots of lots Pretty of lot, lots of life. If you want to take the family out, oh yeah, there, they're, yeah, there's bird that, works, a bait, yeah. uh, sheer water everywhere. There's nice, you know, and that new whale boat out of Sea Four Sport Fishing is nice, yeah. huh? No, it's really really nice. It uh, I think it used to be the Catalina Spirit. It, it transported people from the cruise ships to to Catalina Island because they don't go inside the harbor anymore. Right. And uh, Dave Akita and uh, Dustin and uh, Sea Four. They bought the boat and developed a little bit of a whale business and hopefully get going. Carries 150 passengers. Wow. Inside and outside. Yeah. Team, so. Nice. It's a legitimate size. Yeah. yeah it's yeah. 85 foot Westport. Like a super smooth uh, ocean ride. I'm yeah. Sure. No, it's really nice. Yeah. yeah. That's cool. Got to like it. Well, let's jump back in the phones. Let's do it. Let's talk to Doug, our good friend from Montebello. Welcome to the show this morning, Doug. I, uh, when you guys take the boat to the shipyard, how much? How do you put the paint on? Do you spray it on, or do you have to uh, brush it on? We roll it on. You roll, roll it. it. Yeah. Even LP. The, the bottom. No, no. The bottom. The bottom the paint. Bottom paint. I mean, he's talking about only bottom paint. Out. The bottom paint gets rolled on. Yeah. Uh, you can't spray that stuff too toxic. No. Right? Yeah. And not as that's really thick. Yeah. Uh, it, it's got some weight to it. Yeah. And then we're sanding in the hull or whatever like that, and all that gets. Uh, we we'll roll the primer on and sand it. And then we'll uh, um, tip the, the LP. Yeah, okay. So it, it's all by brush. Oh, yeah. By brushing. Everything from water line up. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, it, it, a lot of guys spray it. We'll spray the primer. You know, you can roll the primer or spray it. Yeah. But uh, the final thing is, you know, some of the guys are, are spraying that LP in the yard, but you got to get everything covered up. Yeah. I mean, you know, you're looking That's at $10,000 or $12,000 just to get, you um, know, the scaffolding around it and yeah. and the plastic wrap. Yeah, so, so a lot better. of money. How yeah. often do you have to? Uh, I know you pull the boat and and bottom paint every year. How often every do you year. have to paint the boat? Uh, I'll do the inside the bulwarks and the house every one year, and then the hull the next year. And just rotate oh, that rotation every around. other year. Yeah. Wow. So, Get all those sinkers banging on the side and stuff it, like that. Yeah. It's, a lot of damage. Hey, yeah. <laughs> Two hundred pound plus yeah. bluefin hitting the deck. Too. Yeah, yeah, that that eats it up. It sounds, sure it does. sounds delicious. Thanks hey. for the call, Doug. Yeah, thank you, Doug. We're going to be right back with Jim from the Cortez. It's a really cool morning. We're having a lot of fun. We're going to be right back on the Let's Talk Hookup app and network. Hey, this is Rosie with Cedro Sport Fishing. Cedros Island is considered the yellowtail and calico bass fishing capital in the world, and nobody does it better than Cedro Sport Fishing. We are committed to providing first-class service to our guests, as well as an unforgettable fishing experience. We have made a good thing even better. We now have a direct flight departing through the CBX in San Diego. Leave home in the morning and fish in the afternoon. We have a beautiful waterfront lodge with first-class accommodations and meals. What are you waiting for? Call me at 619-772-7570 or check out sadosportfishing.com. Book soon. Trips are going fast. Many years ago, Baja pioneer Bob Van Warmer found the area he called the Great Fish Trap in the East Cape of Southern Baja and built what is now regarded as the premier East Cape resorts of Palmas de Cortez and Playa del Sol. Today, following in their father's footsteps, Bob's sons, Bobby, Chucky, and Eddie, have taken Palmas de Cortez and Playa del Sol to new levels with the largest sport fishing fleet in Mexico, a luxurious spa, and top-of-the-line resort amenities. 
Ben Warmer Resorts have become a destination for travelers worldwide. But for us, Palmas de Cortez and Playa del Sol are just a short two-hour flight away. No other tropical fishing destination offers the experience and value that you'll find at Palmas de Cortez and Playa del Sol. Now you can plan your Baja fishing vacation quick and easy by visiting BenWarmerResorts.com. And when you're ready to book, it's quick and easy. Or simply call 877-777-TUNA for more information. Van Warmer Resorts, the East Cape's finest. Time to talk about great gear from Shimano. And when we're talking about bluefin tuna, Talica is the real, right? I know you use a lot of them on the Cortez, right? We have some on. Yeah, yeah. It's, 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 it's a heck of a reel. And power, too. I mean, between and here's the thing. you got power and the flexibility of the different ones. And now, if you can't, you know, you're looking for a Christmas gift, you can't quite afford that Talica. Speedmaster is the new one here. And I know Rick's selling out of in the shop. Oh, too. yeah, they're selling like crazy. They're only available in two sizes, 12 and 16, but that's a perfect size for catching our local fish here, the, 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 the 12 and 16 size. Match it up with the Power Pro Match Quattro or just regular Power Crow or, or Hollow Ace. you got a great machine there. Catch a lot of big fish. The, the Talica or Speedmaster combo, check it out at your local Shimano dealer. I got a garage full of fishing tackle, and every time I get out on the water, I realize I forgot something important. But I never forget my life jacket. I make sure my buddies wear theirs, too. Save the ones you love. A message from California State Parks Division of Boating and Waterways. Turner's Outdoorsman, Southern California's number one shooting, hunting, and fishing tackle retailer since 1971, is right in your neighborhood. Now with stores throughout Southern, Central, and Northern California, no one does it better. Turner's Outdoorsman brings you the best prices and selection, plus a knowledgeable staff that will help make your day on the water or in the field more fun. Stop by your neighborhood Turner's Outdoorsman. To find a location nearest you, check the web at turners.com and sign up for special deals and more. This program is paid for by Let's Talk Hookup. Hookup! All right, welcome back to Let's Talk Hookup. Fun time. Yeah, it is. Hey, uh, Captain Jim Hughes, and he came like he came like Santa Claus today, huh? With bearing Man. like an incredible gift, a day and a half to two and a half day trip on the Cortez, which is the boat that a lot of people want to go on. People love fishing with the way, Pete. It's a day and a half to two and a half day trip, but it's for two. For two people. For two people. One you winner. And a friend. One, winner. one winner is going to win a trip for two on the Cortez with Jim. Just give us a shout. The lines are full now, but uh, when one of them does open up, it's 833-288-0973. Jim, do you run every trip? Every trip. Every trip. How do you do that? It's like Corey. He pours every bait. It's like you guys yeah. are animals. No, it's just... Every it, trip. In the charter business, they charter you just as much as they charter the boat. Yeah. No, especially you. Bill Poole gave me that advice when I was growing up. Really? Because you're going to get a charter boat, you got to run the boat. you got to run the boat. Yeah. So yeah. That's and that's the way I've always run it. Yeah. You know, I what? Mean, if, if I had to take off for something family-wise or whatever, I've had, you know, Dave Haas who's cooking now on the Royal. Uh -huh. He's run the boat for me. Okay. So, it happens. Yeah. Yeah. But not a, a rare occasion. Yeah. It's Doesn't maybe a handful much. of times since I've had the boat. It's, wow. Dedication. 22 years. Yeah. Well, let's find out what's biting out there. Let's do it. And the catch report today, Pete, is sponsored by Blue Guard Innovations, making smart bilge pumps, switches, and sensors designed to protect you, your vessel, and the environment. If your boat lives in the water and you've not installed the BG-1 oil and fuel detector, you could be risking thousands in fines. The BG-1 will detect oil in your bilge before you dump it in the water. Just one of the several switches and sensors made by Blue Guard Innovations Check BGI, that's blue, BGI.com. Get their affordable products at San Diego Marine Exchange. Indeed. Hey, Captain Brian Willie, Dana Wharf Sport Fishing. What's happening, Brian? Hey, good morning, guys. Good morning, What's Willie. Happening there? Good morning. Hey, good morning, Jim. Good stuff, man. Oh, good yeah. stuff. Got the legend in here, huh? Seriously, man. One of the, one of the good guys for sure. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> well, hey, for us up here, you know, a pretty good fishing uh, week for us. The local half-day fishing continued to be uh, pretty good. Still some surface action, I'd say, on the bass with the uh, fly line live baits. So we got real nice sardine again, and that stuff's been working out. Shallow water on the inside, the sheephead fishing has been very good, too. Again, those exotic baits, like the guys bringing the clam and the shrimp, you know, coming prepared, certainly uh, paid off for some of those bigger sheephead in that shallow water. That's been a lot of fun. 
three quarter day, uh, you know, we're going to just continue to ride this rockfish out until it shuts us down for the season. It's been very consistent pretty much all month. So this last week we had a few days of some downhill current that uh, made things a little tricky, but still plenty of fish for us to catch. Live baits, again, I'd say probably fish the best and caught the bigger fish for sure. A little harder to catch on the vertical jigs with the current, but still, you know, the guys that stuck to it and fished it hard all day, uh, they caught what they needed on those jigs as well. That 100-gram cold sniper in the blue or the green was the hot color this week for sure. Ooh. And then and then also plenty of uh, sculpin and whitefish, uh, you know, in the mix as well, fishing that deep stuff there off of uh, North County, out off the Alto Kelp in that zone there. Uh, halibut derby update really not much has changed to be totally honest with you we've seen a lot of bait move back into the areas where the guys like to uh, set their drifts and stuff so that's kind of a good sign maybe it'll pull some fish in over the edge there and get that stuff layered out under that bait so hopefully uh they get a shot at some of that stuff you know they got a boat full of people out there today with their fingers crossed in hopes of catching a another halibut to get on that leaderboard so that's pretty much it for us. We're running all week. Obviously, we'll be closed on Christmas, but uh, weather permitting, too. But uh, we're scheduled to be out all week. So if you guys want to hop on a trip, come fishing, whale watching, whatever you want, give us a call here at the landing. Our phone number is 949-496-5794. Of course, you can check us out on the web at danawharf.com and use that code DEC25. That'll save you 25% on one of these local half- or three-quarter day trips. And also, again, reminder, kids fish free with a paid adult. And that, that free ride kind of goes along, too, with the uh, whale watch trip, too. So if you want to come whale watching, you know, kids will ride free with a paid adult fare on that. As wow. Well for, for now, what about the DEC-25? Does that work on the whale watch boat, too? That, I don't think it'll work on the whale watch boat. I think that's only just the fishing promotion for, okay. uh, for your guys there fishing. All yeah. right. So go to the front page of the Let's Talk Hookup website, letstalkhookup.com. Click on the Dana Wharf banner. Enter the code DEC-25. Is that right? That's it. And yep. you, you get 25% off half and three-quarter day trips. Now, here's the interesting thing about this storm. It's going to be, it looks like a lot of rain, but not a lot of wind. Not I mean, a lot of wind. That's, yeah. Uh, that's kind of what we're hoping. You know, and there's there's some windows, too. If you kind of look at the weather, you can yeah. see there's certainly some windows where, you know, you can miss some of that showers and, and squeak in a little bit. So oh. that's what we're hoping. On Christmas Eve, for sure, that's what it's looking like. So looks we're, like it's real gappy. Yeah, you know? definitely. But when it comes down, it's going to come down. Yeah, just bring yeah. a rain jacket yeah. and go fishing at Dana Wharf Sport Fishing. All right, Brian. Hey, Merry Christmas to you and all the great people at Dana Wharf Sport Fishing. Uh, you guys do such a super job, and we sure appreciate all your support. You give Let's Talk Hook Up. And we'll talk to you next Sunday. We will. Thanks for that, guys. Merry Christmas, everybody. And Merry Christmas, Brian. Brian. All Thanks, right, Jim. You got to take care. Appreciate that very much. All right, uh, we're waiting for Gundy Gunnison, but uh, in the meantime, that's our catch port right now. It is, and uh, the new 2020 CCA Bill Varney counter is now available. I got mine, and I live by it, Pete. Oh I yeah, I love looking at the counter and the ups and downs. You gotta have it. Looking at the entire month. Get yours now at your local tackle store. Turner's Outdoorsman has them. Fisherman's Landing Tackle has them. C4 Sport Fishing C4 has them. Has them. Yeah. I know Mark yesterday was talking about uh, Pacific yeah. Edge has yeah. them. Yeah, they got Step them. Step on it. They have so all the tie it. tables in it. And everything. Oh, it yeah, that, the really good tie Beautiful tables. Things. I live by yeah. that, seriously. Yeah. Oh, yeah, have it on the wall. Someday like we'll get it. a nice smiling picture of Jim Hughes up there. <laughs> right? With the big blue fan. You've, I've seen you in the calendar. Yeah. yeah. I oh, have. Yeah. From the RP pictures. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. For sure. Well, phones are packed. Let's jump into it. Let's do it. Let's talk to Rich. Rich calling from Bradley. Welcome to Let's Talk Hookup this morning, Rich. Good morning. Good morning, I'm Rich. If there's... Oh, and, and Merry Christmas. Merry yes, Christmas. Sir. And I'm wondering if when you're far enough off the coast, can you use more traditional methods for controlling the seals and sea lions that we're not allowed to use uh, when they're in, in shore or when they're Pester and the uh, yellowtail, and and I'm wondering also if if they're a factor when you're out there, uh, way off the coast for uh, looking for bluefin and yellowfin. No, we can't use a better way to deter them, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and Not they right. are that the, the volume of sea lions has increased so much that we see them 150 miles off the and, beach. And quite ironically, and they're it, a beach here, animal. Here's what's ironic to what you just said: is our great white population has has increased. 
Equally. Equally. Yeah. <laughs> but not enough. Yeah. We need more. We need more, yeah. yeah. Do you, yeah, hear, about, do you hear about the surfer that got bit off of yes. Santa Rosa Island? I yeah. did. Uh, and they're saying, yes, what kind of shark is that one? Yes. Yeah. yeah. I can yeah. think of one. Yeah, I can think of and one, that, one. Lives, <laughs> that lives up there right off of Santa yeah, Rosa. The sea lion population is... Is out of control. And it's, it's, it's totally yeah, out of control. The, the environmental count at, at Santa Cruz Island, which is a, one of the rookeries, was just out of control. Out of control. And and here's what's crazy too, Rich, is uh, what we experience here on our local coast with our half day, three quarter day, full day mm-hmm. trips. You see the same exact thing down at Cedros Island. They mm-hmm. are. I don't know if they're educating each other, whatever it is, but man, they are just as educated in Southern Baja. You yeah. see them all the way down, way below that. Yes. Yeah. No. They're bad. Yeah. And and even up into Alaska, when we're in Sitka, the stellar sea lions are all over the salmon up there, mm-hmm. biting the bellies out and stuff like that. Look at the problems they're having in the Northwest. Mm-hmm. Basically, wiping out endangered species of salmon and steelhead. You they, know, they, they have to come up with something because they they, they're, something. there's an issue. They're even, I mean, they're sinking boats. They're, you know. Yeah. Biting yeah, people. Well, yeah. when, it, when they bite the first kid, then they're... Well, then they're oh, they, it's happened. It's yeah. happened. Yeah. yeah. Well, they've bitten and pulled, pulled the pull, little girl in the water. Walk, that's, yeah. yeah. Things no. are going to be changing. Well, I don't... You know... They, yeah. that, it will. They're so they cute whiskers, and cuddly, though. You know, they're supposed... To, yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, you'll you see, know. like, in April, March and April, when we have that... Uh, Tide come in because there'll be a lot of them on the beach. Yeah. And, and, and you're that's nature's the red, way of calling the them tide. out. But then SeaWorld goes and saves them. Well, they they they've lowered their permit, you know, as okay. far as their, their animal wise. Yeah. But there's other groups. They need to let there. nature take you know, its course yeah. on those. Did you have any interactions with bluefin and uh, and sea lions offshore? Yeah, a couple times. Yeah. They just they'll shut you off. Yeah. You know, I mean, they take fish. We've had a couple of them take fish, oh the, the smaller gosh. ones. Yeah, Here's they, they don't they don't screw with the big ones. Oh, oh uh, quite the contrary. Oh, really? I was out one day uh, mm-hmm. with John Freeze on his boat. We had the epic day where we had two hundred, two over, two this over three hundred. This season, yeah, this season. It yeah. was in um, August, I think, uh, or September, mm-hmm. and um, two over three hundred. Ron Lane got his three forty that day, mm-hmm. um, and we had a we had a three thirty. That this sea lion, the two sea lions kept biting at the belly, mm-hmm. biting at the belly as we're pulling up up the fish, to the point where when we were pulling it in the side, he tried to jump in the boat and keep keep hold of it. When we got the fish in the boat, it had marks all over its belly, and th- they were attacking it while he was hooked. That's crazy. It was a giant bluefin. Man, it's crazy. I mean, they're just out of control. They yeah. are. Yeah. They 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 wiped out you know some good schools and. Good spots. Yeah. You know, the sea lions. Blow, blow them up bait. for you. Yeah, oh yeah. They yeah. Blow them up. Yeah. yeah. Hey, uh, good question there, Rich. And hey, by the way, your tip yesterday on the Christmas Spectacular, you have no idea how close you were. You were right there in the running, but there were so many great uh, takes there. Uh, but we appreciate it. And uh, th- have a Merry Christmas to you, Rich. Appreciate the call this morning. Hey, let's continue with our catch report. Gundy Gunderson, our surf guru. Good morning, Gundy. Hey, what's going on, you guys? Merry morning, Christmas. Gundy. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. I, uh, I guess I have, I have to say that the uh, winter, old man winter slammed the door on us this week. <laughs> oh. We had a big temperature drop. You know, we actually had three Corbina in the count last week, and we had 63-degree water, but I understand that 58 down there now, 57. So, you know, it's to be expected, no doubt. Uh, the best bet has been the barred perch bite up on those northern beaches, and uh, we always talk about Oxnard, Ventura, and it's very consistent up there, especially when the water cools. And uh, Hook, Line, Sinker reported good perch bites on Goleta, Silver Strand, Santa Claus Lane, Gulf Twin Sandworms, Root Beer, Motor Oral, Grubs. Uh, most fish around the one-pound par- mark, excuse me, with a few to two pounds. Uh, you know, we'll see more kickers as we go here. Wiley has reported uh, good perch action below Point Magoo there. Lugworm shrimp has been the top bait. The rocky spots kicked out a bunch of cabazon, another sign of cooler water. Those cats start showing up. And that spot pin bite off Huntington kind of petered out with the cooler water. I think they had a four-pounder early in the week, but uh, things kind of deteriorated. Hogan's reported limits a smaller bar perch to a pound. Uh, gulp sandworms and grubs working best there. Salt Creek strands, most consistent. Uh, Pacific. Coast reported two legal halibut taken off Ponto on a crocodile. A few perch were taken at the Army Navy. And like I said, the water temperature was 63. It's 58. Christmas week, so what the heck. We'll go with it. Yeah, it is <laughs> It is what it is there. And, right, Gundy? But uh, 
you know, big surf and uh, all the water conditions certainly wreak havoc on the beach, but still something to catch. Yeah, there's always something to catch. And we had that uh, exciting 15-pound striper last week. So How about you know, that? That's a good one. Yeah, that is a good one. Yeah. Well, Gundy Gunnarsson, we sure appreciate all that you do for Let's Talk Hook Up. All these great surf reports. People comment all the time. How they love that surf report. Merry Christmas to you, and we'll talk to you next Sunday. Yeah, Merry Christmas to everyone out there, and I really enjoy being part of your family. Jesus. Yeah, no, that's you awesome, Gundy. Sure. Appreciate You're, it. You're uh, one of the reports I look to. Look forward to every single week. Yeah, indeed. Keep people informed. All right, Gundy. Hey, enjoy the surf, and we'll talk to you next Sunday. God bless. Have a good holiday. Thank you. All right. Hey, we're going to be right back on Let's Talk Hookup. When we return, we're going to have more from Jim Hughes from the Cortez on the Let's Talk Hookup app, the network. It's long-range time at the Ridge and Lower Banks. Time to get your gear. Hi, this is Doug Kern from Fisherman's Landing Tackle, the saltwater tackle professionals. Big fish need big tackle, and that's why we recommend the Shimano Talica for tuna, Trinidad for Wahoo, matched with a Therese rod. Choosing the right size Talica, Trinidad, and Therese is the trick, and that's where we come in. With more experience and expertise on long-range fishing than anyone, Fisherman's Landing Tackle has the Shimano gear for your trip. Fisherman's Landing Tackle at Fisherman's Fisherman's Landing in San Diego, or on the web at saltwatertackle.com. Fisherman's Landing is the top choice in local and long-range fishing. Our hardworking crew will expand your fishing experience. We offer the finest open party trips, the best charter boats available, and our world-renowned long-range fleet. Fisherman's Landing is now a full-service sport fishing operation, offering great half-day and full-day open party trips. Book online at fisherman'slanding.com. I'll see you at Fisherman's Landing in San Diego. This is Captain Art Taylor of The Searcher. Celia and I and everyone at Team Searcher would like to thank all of our customers for a successful 2018 season. Are you searching for an affordable fishing adventure from one and a half to seven days in length? The Searcher has an outstanding crew, great food, air-conditioned cabins and galley, and an RSW system to preserve your catch. Our 2019 schedule is available now. Book your fishing adventure online at searchersportfishing.com or call our office at 619 619- 226 2403. That's 619 226 2403. Here's John Ireland for Rancho Leonero. You know, the ranch is unique. It's one of the few places in the world where you can still drive ATVs up the beach. We have fishing from the beach. We have dive trips that we run to Pomo in a number of different spots. Kayaking, of course, has been real big. We were one of the first hotels to introduce kayaking. The ranch is small, you know, it's intimate, it's 34 rooms, so everyone gets to know everyone. The old saying, where everyone knows your name. Well, truly at Ranch Lanero, the employees do know pretty darn near all our guests' names. And what's even more interesting is most of the guests know each other's names. Very personal, very intimate, and a special, special environment. Two miles of beachfront, a mile on either side of the hotel. Rancho Leonero is really the last of the old-style Baja fishing resorts. 1-800-646-2252. 1-800-646-Baja. And RanchoLeonero.com. I'll personally guarantee your best fishing experience and vacation at Rancho Leonero. A top fleet and superb fishing is what Seaforth Sport Fishing in Mission Bay is all about. With free parking and fully stocked tackle shop, it's no wonder Seaforth Sport Fishing is a favorite among anglers. Come aboard top boats like the Aztec, Cortez, Endeavor, Apollo, Outer Limits, El Gato Dos, Pride, Tribute, Pacific Voyager, and the Voyager. Plus, the new Seaforth Sea Watch in San Diego offer the finest half and full day trips available. Seaforth Sport Fishing. For charters or regular open party schedule, Check SeaforthLanding.com. Run by fishermen for fishermen in Mission Bay. We all need to get around, but we all need something different from our vehicles. Your San Diego County Ford dealers have you covered if you're looking for a new truck this month. Plus, it's SUV season, so they have great deals for everyone. Whether it's a new Echo Sport that is nimble and fun around town, or the Ford Explorer that is capable of putting a boat in the water and has seating for seven, Ford has you covered. Ford trucks and SUVs aren't just powerful and legendary. They have the latest technology that helps you seamlessly connect your smartphone and ensure you're safe on the road. Features like Pro Trailer Backup Assist on trucks are truly a game changer at the ramp, helping you back up a trailer by simply turning a knob on the dash and doing the hard work for you. So check out all the great deals during SUV season and save some money on the right gear for you. Learn more at BuyFordNow.com or visit your San Diego County Ford dealers today. They'll be glad to hook you up. 
Your vacation bucket list can't be completed without visiting the Katmai Lodge, Alaska this summer. A world-class wilderness fishing paradise on the banks of the famed Alagnac River. Get in the action fishing for all five species of Pacific salmon. King, sockeye, chum, coho, plus trophy-sized rainbow trout, arctic grayling, and dolly varden. Both in the Alagnac and nearby waters. Katmai Lodge's Coast Guard and CPR certified guides are fly fishing fanatics and know how to help you reel them in, ensuring your days are fish filled while you enjoy freshly prepared snacks and barbecued lunches on the river. Back at the lodge, enjoy fireside appetizers and refreshments each afternoon. Delicious dinner prepared by the lodge's exceptional chef. Take a quick fly-out trip to Brooks Falls in Katmai National Park for world-renowned bear watching. And check out our trout fishing specials at katmai.com. That's K-A-T-M-A-I.com. Katmai.com. 